uh, Katie has some questions specifically about the black press, but um, in the frame of um, the news media historically around uh, issues around race, which we'll get to at some point, um, I would argue that you know there's never been a time, to my knowledge, that there's truly been an objective uh, press or objectivity. Um, so um, yeah, neutral news reporting, um, but I, I do think that um, you know we've gotten away from this idea of what at least initially what the uh, early 20th century sort of thinkers about objectivity really meant. And they really meant it to be more of a craft rather than a, a person, right? And I think now we've, as an as a audience, have conflated or expected to have objective people um, when we all come with our own biases and our own lens and our own perspectives. And I think when the, the initial notion around objectivity was more of a, a craft, a, a neutral sort of type of news reporting, a way to try to assign a level of uh, objectivity to the news. Mm -hmm. we'll go down this. Oh, hey, hi, y'all. <laughs> well, uh, actually, I teach at Hunter College. I've taught journalism there for 15 years and before that, NYU. And I never teach my students to be objective because objectivity is impossible. What I teach them is to be fair. And what has been lacking, uh, I heard Mike talk about Walter Cronkite. <laughs> Okay. Lacking, we're applauding lacking. Okay. Right. Uh, what I heard Mike talk about Walter Cronkite, I grew up on Walter Cronkite, but what I also grew up on was a lack of diversity. Mm -hmm. And in a newsroom that is 4% um, black in a world that uh, so many things are happening without anyone with a perspective to talk about what's happening, uh, it means no one gets what's going on. There's no fairness when you don't have representation. So. Um, the goal is not objectivity. The goal is to have representation and for people to be fair about the stories that they cover. That's my opinion. Hi. Um, I teach a, a course in journalism history for Columbia journalism students, master's students, and a lot of them come into the class and they think, why on earth do I have to study history in journalism? All you care about is what happened 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're kind of shocked. And they're even more shocked when I start giving them readings from the 18th and the 19th centuries, mm -hmm. and they say, but it's not objective, they failed, they failed. And I say, why would you think that they should be objective? Well, everything's supposed to be objective and they can't and it fails. Why do you think, where did that rule come from? Well, because everything is supposed to be objective. And we push a little bit more and it finally becomes clear. There is a sense that objectivity is two things. One, brought down from the mountain on its stone tablet that, you know, a rule that has been there forever mm. and also unattainable. Mm. And the second may be true, but the first is completely bananas because the, in, the, in the first, Two, three hundred years of the U.S. press, which is what I focus on, the newspaper was, was supposed to be a political organ. Right. It was intended to be a political apparatus. The, the editors of newspapers were political part, uh, party members. They talked about what was going on in Washington in politics. It was a radical breakthrough in the 1830s when some people started to think maybe they could sell newspapers in a different way if they didn't talk about politics. Mm -hmm. But it was a very slow process, and not until the beginning of the 20th century did objectivity, so-called, become a value, and almost the moment it became a value, Value, it also was understood to be sort of you know, a, a, a phantom. But this is, this is a, one of those great, those great myths of journalism mm -hmm. that it's criticized for something that it never really intended from the beginning either.